So you've got all your camping gear laid out and ready to go. And now it's time to stuff your backpack. How should you do it? Is there a right way to pack a backpack? Is there a wrong way to pack a backpack? In this video, I'll show you exactly how I pack my bag and the reasons why I do it that way. So stick around. What's going on, friends? It's Rob with Arpelton One. Thanks for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Just getting uh, packed up for a, you know this trip that I'm on, and I started packing my backpack, and I thought, what, what's a better time to show you exactly how I do it and the reasons why than right now? Now, for you, you might be in your kitchen, laying stuff out on your kitchen table. It, it goes the same for out in camp or you know at home when you're packing your bag for the first time. So let's see how I do things and what order I put them in. So I sleep in a hammock as my primary sleep system. No tents, no no pads or anything like that. A hammock, and I, I absolutely love it. So I just put the rain fly, just folded back so you can kind of see what I got going on here. My backpack, for the most part empty, with the exception of just a few things in the pockets. But let's start with an empty pack. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not that empty. <laughs> So now we got an empty pack. I'm just gonna kinda fold it down this top section. And if you have a pack that rolls up from the top like that, then you could do this. You know, otherwise, you, know, you don't have to. This is what I do. So now we got an empty pack. And uh, I'm gonna use a pack liner. Now today it's not calling for any rain, but most of the time I'll use a pack liner, which is a waterproof bag essentially. This is a nylo fume bag. Um, super light, um, waterproof, obviously, but this will go in the bag just so I can line it. Now, in this bag is going to be everything I need to stay dry. Now, my, my pack is fairly waterproof, but not 100%. So that's lined, ready to get stuffed. The first things I'm going to throw at the very bottom of the bag are going to be the last things I need, basically the things that I'll need at camp. Stuff I won't be use, using during the day, like my extra clothes. Here's my stocking cap I only wear at camp. My sleeping tights. Extra socks. This all goes right at the bottom of the bag. My puffy. I usually bring a puffy. This is a synthetic. I won't wear this on trail, just at camp. My little pillow stuff sack where I stuff extra clothes to use as a pillow. My sleep socks. I always wear separate socks just for sleeping, only for sleeping so I know they're dry. And these are those little grippy socks. They got little the grippy dots on it because it sticks to the fabric really well so you can put your feet up. It's kind of cool, kind of funny, but kind of a little tip if you want to, you know, have your feet stay play in place, get some grippy socks. But those will go right in the bottom. And just pack it down there, fill that space, fill all the little corners, fill all the little voids with your clothes. The very next thing that goes into the pack liner right on top of all my clothing is going to be my top quilt or your sleeping bag because you're not going to need to pull that out until the very end because you got to get your tent set up and everything set up first and then you lay your sleeping bags in there so you won't need them right away. So you pack your sleeping bag, your top quilt right on top of your clothing at the bottom of the bag and like I said, stuff it around the corners, get in on the edges, fill up all those little nooks and crannies. Next up, underquilt. Now, if you're using a tent, this underquilt is gonna be like your sleeping pad. So make this your sleeping pad instead of an underquilt if you're using a tent. And this is gonna go right on top of your sleeping bag or your top quilt. Now, if you're gonna stuff your sleeping pad in here as well, you don't necessarily need to fold them up neatly. You can just do a rough fold and stick it in here. I do suggest keeping your your air pad inside a pack liner so that stays dry. Now, I know those are you know full of air and they're waterproof, but some of the air pads have a material on the outside that can hold water just a little bit. You don't want to put a damp pad into your tent. So stuff your pad on top of your sleeping bag because you're gonna lay your pad first, then your sleeping bag after that, kind of like a reverse order. That's it for the, for the dry bag. That's everything that you essentially need to keep dry. So you just take it at this point, 
smash it down in the pack, get all the air out, and then roll it down. Now everything else is gonna start going on top of that. I just got my hammock tore down, my tarp tore down. Now that'll be the same as you basically tearing down your tent. Now, here's my hammock, which would also be your tent as well, right? Usually comes with a stuff sack. I will say go ahead and stuff your tent. Uh, you don't necessarily need to fold your tent the same way every time. Just free stuffing it is just fine. But one key is don't put your tent poles in your tent bag. Keep your tent poles separate, and I'll tell you why. One, so you can stuff it in your bag horizontally. and It'll fit nice. It'll compress a lot. It'll, it'll compress a lot better. And my tent is heavier than my rain fly. So my tent is gonna go against the back of my backpack closest to my body. Because anything that's closer to your body is gonna be closer to your center of gravity. So your body's gonna handle the weight better. So just in front of that, I'll stuff my rain fly. And now I got this little platform and I'll press it all down to make sure it's all compressed. Now my rain fly is, is, is right on top. Now, if you wanna put your, your sleeping pad, you know, at, in place of this and not put it inside your dry sack, fine. It'll just stuff in here, it'll still make a pretty nice platform. But after that, I throw my rain gear right in the pack, especially if it's a day where I know it's not gonna rain. Like today, it doesn't call for any rain. So I'll go ahead and stuff it on the inside of the pack. It's completely fine. Now I will say, if it does call for rain that day and it's cloudy and it's just not raining, perhaps right when you're leaving, go ahead and take all your rain gear and stuff it in an outside pocket. Most packs nowadays have these big mesh pockets on the outside. Stuff your rain gear in here. That way, when you take your pack off to put rain gear on, you don't have to open up your whole pack. You can just grab it quickly out of this outside pocket. But today, I'm gonna stuff it inside because like I said, not expecting rain. Now, the rain gear, I'm gonna stuff in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of push it a little bit towards the front, towards the furthest part away um, from my bag. And I'll tell you why in a minute. All the lighter weight things you want further from your body, all the heavy things you want closer to your body. So, here's my ditty bag. This is gonna nestle in right against my body, closest to my body, right next to the rain gear. Now inside my ditty bag, there's nothing in here that absolutely needs to stay dry dry, with the exception of my battery pack. I do a lot of filming, so I carry a bigger battery pack, which is why it's in a, in a Ziploc baggie. If I have my headlamp in here and just stuff that I'm gonna use in camp. Nothing in here I'll ever need while on trail. It's all camp stuff. So that'll nestle right towards the back, right next to the rain gear, and, and push everything down. Now, the very last thing, food bag. Your food bag is gonna be one of the heaviest things to put in your pack. I always keep this right next to my body, closest to my body, and on top because a food bag kind of rests right on your shoulders, kind of like a squat bar would. If you've ever done squats, you know the weight is up on your shoulders and it's very close to your center of mass. That's where I like to position this food bag. So that's gonna go right on top of my ditty bag, right behind the rain gear. So now I'm gonna roll this up, close the pack down, that's gonna be it for the inside of the pack. You got all the things that you need dry, dry in that compactor bag. Now, regular trash compactor bags, they work really well. They're, they're very durable, they're thick, a little heavy. If you want a link to where I got that Nylofoom bag, that really lightweight waterproof bag, I'll leave a link to where I got that down in the description. Those are really nice. They're a little loud at first, but they're, they're super nice. So on the outside of the pack, the pockets, all the external pockets on your backpack. The stuff that I choose to throw in this big meshy pocket, this is your junk drawer on the trail. Meaning you just throw everything in here and, and use it as you need and it's quick access. Now that junk drawer term I got from Midwest Backpacker. So thanks for, for that term because it's accurate. So in this pocket, I'm gonna keep my poop kit. I'm gonna keep my first aid kit. All on the outside. These are things where you got you can take off your pack and just access those items. Yeah, especially the, the first aid kit. I learned on my last trip that I needed some major blister care. And I kept my first aid kit in my ditty bag. So I had to take apart my whole pack to take care of blisters. Keep your metal kit on the outside. That way you can just take off your pack and, and take care of it. You shouldn't have to access your pack during the day with the exception of, of lunch, really. <clears throat> 
on the sides. This is where I keep my cook kit. My fuel canister, you know, my little my little stove and everything fits in here perfectly. Now this can go inside your pack if needed, no big deal. But I don't use these water bottle pockets for water bottles, and I'll show you that in just a second. On the other water bottle pocket is where you're gonna keep your tent poles, or in my case, the spreader bars for my hammock. And just be sure that you don't forget your stakes either. If you have a tent, keep your stakes, you know, in your in your uh, tent pole bag. <laughs> that, that would help a lot. And most bags have your water bottle pocket, and a lot of them have a cinch strap too. So this fits right in here perfectly. Like I said, it allows your tent to compress a lot more inside your pack because your poles. Who cares if your poles get wet? Right alongside that is going to be my water filter. This is the Katahdin B Free. Again, something you need quick access to and you don't want in your pack, especially if this is wet, you don't want it inside. So this will go right here. So I can take off my pack and just filter water, call it good. Up front, right on my shoulder straps, I have these pockets. These pockets are water bottle holders, water bottle holders, and they're made by Justin's UL. He has a couple different sizes. And this is so you can keep your water bottles up front helps distribute some weight up front. It also keeps this close to your body because water is heavy. So those will go right up front, just like that. That's the basic pack configuration. So now we got hip belt pockets. Now, if your backpack doesn't have hip belt pockets, then you, know, you can find other places to, to store these small items. But in my hip belts, I carry just a little rag because you know, I've been sweating kind of loud on this trip. It's also good to have, you know, if you need to wipe down your, your rain fly or something like that in the morning, if there's any dew. But this is a quick access for me so I can wipe down sweat. And in that same pocket, I'll keep a bug net. It's pretty buggy out here this weekend. That way, if I get onto a section of trail and it's buggy, I can just take this out quick and throw it on, call it good. Now that stays in one hip belt. The other hip belt, which is my left, I mean, I keep like chapstick. This is also where I'm going to keep snacks, beef jerky, trail mix, that kind of stuff, stuff I can snack on throughout the course of the day. This will go on the outside hip belt. That way I can snack and keep on trekking. Now for my camp shoes, I use the Crocs because they're just, they're just hard to beat. Crocs are just hard to beat. These things I wear around camp because I just want to kick off my shoes for, you know, after walking 10, 12, 15 miles. These will go in this big stuff sack around the outside. These don't weigh much. And they fit perfectly there. Could I fit them inside the pack? Yeah, I probably can. But on the on the bottom side, there's like sap and, and sometimes mud. And I don't want that stuff on the inside of my pack. So I'll stuff them here and call it good. Now, if you wanted to, your lunch, you can put your lunch on the outside pack here too. That way you don't have to dig in. But most of the time, I just keep it inside since a lunch is going to be a longer stay anyways. And now pretty much the very last thing before I head out. I pack up my chair. This is going to, going to go on the outside. Again, if I stop for lunch, I can just break out the chair, set it up, and have a nice, comfortable place to sit wherever I am. Now, I have the Helinox Chair Zero. This chair with just the, the material and the frame, it's like just over a pound, one pound, two ounces. It advertises as, as a pound, but it's like a pound, two ounces. A lot of times I add this chair pad. This adds like another five ounces. So now it's like a pound and a half chair, but that will keep your legs from sinking in. Now for the chair, I usually take the material and I'll fold it over like this. And then I'll roll my chair up into the seat material. Just like that, you got this little package. Take my chair pad will go on the outside now these chair zeros they come with a stuff sack i don't use the stuff sack i usually just use a piece of paracord with a with a jam knot a canadian jam knot if you don't know what that is look it up it's a pretty useful knot because you can just cinch it all down and this goes right on top of the pack got the nice over strap cinch that down this pack is ready to rock and roll and that's how I pack my pack 
you have any questions about how I do it, do you have any suggestions, anything like that, leave those questions, comments down in the comment area. I read all the comments, so leave your two cents, leave your questions down there. Huh. But I appreciate you watching. If you have any tips, please leave those down in the comments below so others may be able to you know, read those as well and get some tips. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe right down there so you don't miss any of the videos that I have coming up. <sighs> See you on the next one.